If you have OSHA compliance questions or concerns, Pike Group's got you covered. Hey, welcome back to Head First Fishing. It's another installment of Hey Yo, Captain Joe. This is where I read your emails and answer you directly. This segment is brought to you by St. Pete Fishing Outfitters, Tampa Fishing Outfitters, and Tarpon Fishing Outfitters, the place to get fitted to fish, and the Pike Consulting Group, your OSHA safety consultants. Let's get the old smartphone out here and get into the first email. The first email comes from Matt, and Matt writes, Hey yo, Captain Joe, I've been in an argument with my good fishing buddy, and we're having a debate on who is the better fisherman. He only fishes with live bait, and I strictly fish with lures. We both catch a lot of fish, but we can't seem to figure out who really is the better angler. Let us know your thoughts. Well, I appreciate the email, Matt. Uh, that debate has been raging on for a long time and uh, might end up hurting some feelings here, ruffling a few fins and feathers, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get right to it. Live bait versus lures. Who is the better fisherman? If you're only fishing with lures, if, if, if you're predominantly fishing with lures, you're the better fisherman. Artificial lure fishermen are better than live bait fishermen. That doesn't mean live bait fishermen are bad, but the thing is, is that live bait is doing quite a bit of the work for you compared to lures where you have to perfectly present a lure and work it in the strike zone in order to get the fish to take. So, you know, a lot of people, they stick to live bait because it's so effective. You can load up on live bait at a, you know, at a, a live bait and tackle store. They, there's bait boats out here you can buy it from. You can also go out and net it yourself. And if you can get a lot, and you can catch a lot of fish. Lures, on the other hand, you know, it, it takes a little bit more technical skill. You're going out and the know-how, the where and the when is the same, but you're, you're, accurately placing a bait and bringing it back in front of a fish and working that bait right so that it is enticed to strike you know you're fishing with something that's not alive and you're making it look alive so the the technique that's involved in getting a strike on an artificial lure is greater than live bait if you're fishing with live sardines for snook and redfish you nose hook him on there throw him out there and let him swim around bam it gets nailed so artificial lure fishing is a little bit more cerebral, uh, but I think it's a lot more rewarding. When you go out and you're throwing paddle tails or curly tail grubs, or you're f fishing with jerk baits and topwater lures and you know, whatever it is, when you get bit, it's far more rewarding. The strike, when you're working that lure, the strike on that artificial bait is uh, pretty intense sometimes. So, you know, if you're a live bait fisherman, sorry. If that's all you do, the guys that are throwing lures are better than you, and you just gotta get over it. Our next email comes from an unnamed follower, and he writes, Hey yo, Captain Joe. I moved down to Tampa Bay in July of 2020. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I've never really fished up here, but I'm loving the fishing in Tampa so far. I bought a medium light action rod and a Shimano 4000 reel. I use 65 pound test braid with a 35 pound mono leader and one or two odd hooks. Usually fishing with live shrimp or live greenbacks and fish from shore or weight fish. So far I'm only able to catch a bunch of little mangrove snapper. I'm looking to try to expand the species I catch to sheep's head, gag grouper, Spanish mackerel, or anything else that's good eating. Do you have any advice for someone like me who doesn't have boat access? Should I change my bait and tackle or find new spots to fish? Best of luck I've had is at the Skyway Pier and Clearwater Bridge. Well, I can go ahead and help you out with a couple things real quick. Uh, first of all, you're using too heavy line for that 4000 reel. This is a Florida Fishing Products 4000 Osprey and I've got 20 pound braid on there. This is a good size line for this because it gives me good line capacity and it pretty closely matches the drag pressure capacity that's in the reel. A reel like this is underpowered for 65 pound braid. So you've got this big strong 65 pound line but you don't have the drag pressure to be able to utilize it. So that's a waste number one. And then number two, 65 pound braid is gonna take up a lot more room on the spool. It's not gonna cast as well. So you need to take that 65 pound line off and put some 15 or 20 or something like that. I would go maximum 30 pound line on a reel of this size. 
definitely recommend you change that out. Next, the medium light rod that you have is a little bit wimpy. It's not unusable, but I would step up to just a straight medium or a medium fast or even a medium heavy fast. That would be a good move from what you currently have. 65 pound braid would make a lot more sense on something like this Florida Fishing Products Osprey 6000. I use this for a lot of grouper fishing. You can use it for tarpon, sharks, you know, cobia, anything big and strong that you're gonna put a lot of heat on. You're gonna need a bigger reel like that. So recommend getting a reel of that size. Definitely check out Florida Fishing Products. Thanks for coming to this episode of Hey Yo Captain Joe. If you have any questions, send an email to headfirstfishing at gmail.com and in the subject, write Hey Yo Captain Joe. I'd love to hear from you and maybe you'll be featured in another episode. Once again, thanks for our sponsors, St. Pete Fishing Outfitters, Tampa Fishing Outfitters, and Tarpon Fishing Outfitters, the place to get fitted to fish, and also the Pike Consulting Group, your OSHA safety consultants. I'll see you later. Many employers don't understand OSHA regulations, maintaining OSHA compliance and worker safety. Whether you're in the construction field, general industry, or manufacturing, or have fleet safety needs, Pike Group has a team of dedicated safety professionals to help you understand and resolve your issues. Remember, at Pike Consulting Group, we are your partner in understanding OSHA. If Pike Group can assist you in any way, please don't hesitate to contact us at 678-208-5548 or through our website, pikegroup.net.